Good morning friends. Welcome to our next teaching session. This was an incident of 2005. A male patient about 55 years of age was brought to me from Mathura. Mathura is a town about 120 kilometers from Delhi. The patient had bleeding in this uh, blood in this stool he was 55 years old male he was non smoker having normal blood pressure and having no history of bleeding from any other source the story told to me was that patient underwent operation for his piles and the doctor advised him to take a tablet of anti inflammatory drug which is given for the relief of pain and swelling in that region. The patient did take the tablet. By the evening, the patient had an urge to pass stool. He went to the toilet, passed stool, but it was all blood. Within a span of one hour, he passed another motion, this time more blood than the first time, and patient fainted in the toilet. Then, I was contacted and the patient was arranged to be brought to Delhi to my hospital. There I was requested to reach in the night at 11. I reached there, the patient came, I examined him, his vital signs were stable. So I started a precautionary intravenous infusion of normal saline. I gave instructions to send the test for grouping and matching and other uh, routine tests which were essential at that time and sent a consultation to the senior surgeon if any surgical intervention is required or not required. Next I fixed a gastroscopy for the next morning because I suspected that the culprit is the stomach. Next morning I was present during the process of gastroscopy. I also visualized it and there were multiple areas, areas, pinpoint ulcers in the stomach wall. But there was no blood oozing at that time. There was no bleeder, there was no mass in the stomach, there were no varices and thus we thought of keeping the patient on conservative treatment. I gave him an injection of omeprazole. It was the only proton pump inhibitor at that time and I gave him a dose of 20 mg intravenously. Repeated next two days. I could not give him more because of the fear of stopping the acid secretion altogether. It was a new drug and very very potent uh, anti secretory drug for the hydrochloric acid. So, the, uh, I gave instructions for daily testing stool for grass as well as microscopic and occult blood examination. For three days, uh, uh, he kept on passing blood in the stool, but on fourth day, the blood stopped. I, I uh, watched him for fifth and sixth days, and when there was no bleeding, no occult blood, I discharged the patient on the seventh day. I found in, in the follow-up that there has been no problem after that. What had happened? See this diagram. Now look at this diagram. This is uh, to make you conversant with the, the, your tummy. Uh, the portion of your tummy below your chest and above your hip bones is called abdomen. You can easily know it, you know easily there is a navel in the center and this side is the right side and this side is the left side. The hair would be the area of liver. So this is the rounded area, this is called cecum. The small intestines comes and joins here, this area. It comes here and joins this area and from here food passes like this. 
Now this is called ascending column because it is going up. It is called ascending column and then it goes right up to the liver and then makes a bend to come down like this. Make, goes up like this, makes a bend and comes down like this. Goes transversely, goes horizontally across your tummy. This is called transverse column. It is going horizontally. Horizontal means transverse. It goes to the left side, right, reaching right high up. This is the area where spleen is lying there. And this is called splenic flexure. Whereas this is called hepatic flexure. This is called splenic flexure. From there it again bends down and it comes like this. Down. This is called descending colon. And then it bends inwards coming to your pelvis. This is called sigmoid colon. And after this portion of sigmoid colon, then it goes again towards uh, lower region as well as to your back. This is called rectum. And then this is the excretory passage that is called anal canal. Now, all this is called large intestine or colon. It is large because of its size. Otherwise, lengthwise, it is much much smaller than the so called small intestine or gut. So small intestine is called gut, large intestine is called colon and these are the various parts of the colon itself. Cecum, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, splenic flexure, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anal canal. Now, Look at this diagram. Now this is the stomach. This is the wall of the stomach. Now remember friends, the ulcer is break in the lining membrane of the stomach. It is not the uh, uh, whole thickness which is damaged. It is the lining membrane. And there is a, uh, there are inflammatory cells like shown here. So you see this area, this area, uh, this area has been magnified has been enlarged has made, been made bigger to show you this structure these are fine these are rounded bodies are which you are finding these are the cells inflammatory cells inside the mucous membrane see another diagram see another diagram what has happened here this is magnified portion of the ulcer this is the ulcer in the stomach. See, this is the ulcer. This has, this is the ulcer, and here is also an ulcer. This is part of the small gut. It is called duodenum. Duodenum is the part of small gut. All these ulcers are called under one name as peptic ulcer. Though this ulcer in being in the stomach is called gastric ulcer, this ulcer being in the duodenum is called duodenal ulcer. But they are covered under one uh, name, peptic ulcer. So this, these are the folds of the stomach. These are normal folds of the stomach. But here you see this area, this area, and with reddish center. This is the ulcer. See this? I'm making you very close to the uh, uh, screen. See this is the, and similarly you see this area. This, these are the ulcers and this is made bigger to show you the ulcer area now see another diagram to understand what is this see this see this reddish areas these are all pinpoint ulcers these are all pinpoint ulcers they are red but not no blood is coming out of these as yet this is what is called aspirin induced gastritis or anti inflammatory drugs induced gastritis. It is diffuse disease involving the large area of the stomach, very small ulcers, pinpoint size. But all these ulcers, when ooze blood, the total blood becomes very large. Now, as I showed, showed you in my previous diagram here, if the blood comes out from this portion, even even this portion if the blood is coming out of this portion this is usually red blood in the stool 
if it comes from this area it is usually red blood but if it comes from the small intestines or stomach then by passing through the stomach and small intestines this is acted upon by enzymes and it's it changes its color it becomes black and if it is of uh, some magnitude and some standing then it comes out as black tar like material it is called black tarry stools that is a in fact indication that the blood is coming right from higher up so in our patient it was why it was red blood if it was coming from the stomach the answer is simple when there is a large amount of bleeding from the stomach the movements of the stomach and intestines become so quick that the blood does not have time to stay inside to get changed therefore red blood is passed into the stool so friends you need to take caution need to know the history of the patient and tell the patient what precautions patient should take or observe at home avoid unnecessary medications like we are used to giving anti inflammatory drugs avoid as far as possible if you use want to use uh, for pain relief use simple medicine like paracetamol which is comparatively safe as compared to the combination of anti inflammatory and paracetamol or aspirin like drugs and even then take a precaution to keep the patient under your own observation till patient has totally recovered also count the history of any bleeding tendencies from the patient if none is there then you are in, uh, uh, this is a safe bet for you to do it so friends i was successful in managing this patient i successfully sent the patient home though in the first part i was little apprehensive that whether we can manage it in a small place or not but we were able to manage it uh, being on very scientific grounds so friends uh, what you learn from the is, is that this bleeding can occur from the stomach or intestines the blood which comes from the large intestines or colon is usually red in color blood which comes from higher up is usually black in color but blood coming from higher up if comes in vomiting then it is a red blood but if it stays inside the body it gets changed because of the injection of an uh, action of enzymes and this becomes black in color sometimes there is a very small amount of bleeding that blood passes in the stool and nothing is visible on naked eye examination but if you do the test for occult blood chemical blood uh, test for occult blood occult is hidden hidden blood if you do a test for hidden blood it will turn out to be positive so taking these precautions uh, treat your patients and uh, between the x2 receptor blockers and protein pump inhibitors it has been shown that ppis that is protein pump inhibitors are more effective in reducing the acid excretion and therefore they should be used in such cases friends thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much for support you have been giving me please continue to like comment and subscribe my channel then keep on giving your suggestion so that i can bring out those topics for your learning which are interesting friends i am repeatedly saying that my objective of this type of talk is to spread medical knowledge medical awareness to the general public i have been writing writing blogs on the facebook and at many other places the video i have started only recently so unless you give me feedback i cannot know whether i am doing good job or not so please do tell me do write something so that i know that you are reading the article in the comments forum the uh, some certain people have asked me they uh, do not know some people cannot open the uh, video uh, i am tell you that you must look at that you have a active network uh, if you do not have network you can't open it if you have network click the link that is the objective of sending link click the link then the video will open you will find below my name 
there are a column where it is written comment you click the comment your uh, uh, for your comment the space will be created there and you can write your comment there you know there are signs for uh, your liking that is thumbs up is there and there is a uh, those who have not done it for them there will be a, a choice for subscribe it will be written prominent subscribe click subscribe and you it will show that you have subscribed the channel uh, this is all for today we will meet next time with some other interesting topic thank you very much